Greetings and God bless you. We are the Generals and the Boss Prophets, Dr. Apostles April and Andrew, and we are here with your weekly, weekly word, word of supernatural, supernatural empowerment. empowerment. We decree that by the power of God, that what you are about to hear will shift you into, into your, your new season. season. Let's listen in closely as the word is already in progress. What's the difference between deliverance and breakthrough? Deliverance is you can get delivered from one area of in your life, just like the anointing is for specific areas, but the glory is greater. You can get delivered from one area in your life, but still struggle in another area. But when you have breakthrough in your life, you delivered in every area. That's the Woo! difference. Amen. Um, Amen. Yes. Great teaching. They're Come not on. teaching this in the churches today. Is your pastor teaching you this? Why? Because your pastor, all they know is how to move in deliverance. And I can't fault them, but I can fault them. Because if you're hungry and you're thirsty, like I was, you will search for more. You will go chase after God for more. You will be like Moses and say, Lord, show me your glory. You will be fasting in prayer, pushing your plate back, asking for Jesus Christ to give you the revelation. Let me tell you something, people of God. When Jesus comes to you face to face and he teaches you personally, there are things and secrets that you won't even find in the Bible when the Messiah stands before you and teach you face to face. Uh-huh. Amen there. But you got to get to that place. You got to want to get to that place. You got to get out of your tradition. Get out of your religion. Get out of my pastor. Do it this way. Get out of my mama. Do it this way. Stop doing it their way and do it God's way. Man. Man. I don't care. Let me say this. I love the big name preachers. But at the same time, I'm going to tell people, man, just because God just because God made my name big, don't follow after me because of that. Amen you there. Follow, you better follow after me because I got the glory on my life. Amen. Not because 100,000 people know me. Not because I'm getting 500 likes on my Facebook posts. Not because I'm famous and popular. It's a lot of famous preachers that's dying and going to hell. Amen there. My I can't name. get no amens. I don't know. We busy cooking them eggs or something. Come on, amen. There, say it again. We following these big name preachers because it's a big name, but not because heaven knows their name. Woo! My God. Seriously, we like groupies. I mean, it's like seriously, like we groupies. A lot of us in the church, and I, I, and this ain't this is not no hate. I'm trying to get you to a place where, because see, what happens is this. A lot of times we begin to follow these big names, but we still not getting breakthrough in our life. And then what happens is you come to the ones with the smaller names, such as myself, and you want us to do all the work. But you don't want to support the ministry. You don't want to give. You don't want to do nothing. But you, you put, shell out all your money to these conferences, and you, you they fan, and they don't even know your name, and you're not getting breakthrough. My Lord. So what happens, what needs to happen is there needs to be a rearranging of motive. The focus needs to change. And, and what, what you need to say within yourself is, I thank God that the world following them, but I need something and someone that can really give me breakthrough. Yeah. That can really transform my life. That can help me get pride out of my life. Yeah. Yeah. But everybody not doing that. Everybody not a leader. Everybody not a standout leader. Everybody, we want to follow the crowd. And, and this is what happens. <clears throat> we go to these big-time preachers, but then our family's suffering. And then so we get, I heard another bishop say this, powerful woman of God. She said, we go on Facebook, and then we inbox and flood the ministers that we feel we can get in touch with. We flood them with our problems. But why didn't you go to the big time names and flood them with your problems because you know that they ain't going to look at you but like a number. Amen there. You got They're going to look at you like a number. Amen. That's the truth. But, but you putting your stock in them. Yep. Mm. Instead of putting your stock in God, we have become spiritual groupies. Mm. Will they teach you how to heal the sick? Will they teach you how to move through breakthrough? Come on now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me let me get up off that. <laughs> let me get up off that. 
don't you understand that pride will cause your physical body to get sick? Yes, it will. Right. You're you right. You will start developing sickness in your physical body all because of that stupid spirit. Yep. And then you will go before a great man and woman of God and be like, I've been before 12 preachers, and they could not get me healed. I don't know what's going on. Know why? Because you have that spirit of pride dominating you. Yep. In order for you to get some of y'all to get healed, first you have to pull out pride. Amen. Man. 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 You have to let go of pride. And once pride is removed, then you will be more free to receive your healing. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yes. I'm just telling it like it is. Amen. Mm-hmm. Compassion, Amen. love, yeah. humility, these are the foundation of healing ministry. And also forgiveness. Mm. These are the foundations. Yeah. Say, it, say it. Repeat after me, people of God. Say compassion. 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 Love, love. Love. Forgiveness. 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 These are. These are. The foundation. Foundations. Foundations. Of healing ministry. Healing Amen. ministry. Amen. Amen. There. Amen. 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 See, y'all thought I was going to give y'all these big-time secrets and stuff, and I done taught them that, too, before, because there are other components to it. But before you can even get to that side of the healing ministry, you have to first deal with the pride issue. you got to get that out of you. And there's some people on here right now today, you have pride. But I want you yeah. to know that the Lord Jesus loves you. And he, he, his hands is open right now. He's saying, just come to me. I'm going to love on you. I know, I know you got, some of y'all developed that pride because you've been hurt. Some of y'all been rejected. Some of your family yeah. have hurt you. Some of, even somebody yeah. else, you've been molested, the Lord's showing me. And you've developed yeah. a hard heart, and pride has settled in. But the Lord Jesus Christ is saying today, all who are heavy laden, all who have heavy burdens, come unto me. He said, come unto me, my child. He wants to love on you so much. All he got to do is hug you, and instantly you receive breakthrough. Amen. Amen. This is what the Holy Spirit is saying. Some of you guys need to deal with that. Well, actually, everyone needs to deal with that pride. <clears throat> there's a measure, just like there's a measure of faith in each of us, there's a measure of pride in each of us. I'm not, I am not oblivious to that fact, especially when it comes to apostles. Apostles, we, have, we can have the most pride. And that's why I, every day I have to check myself and I have to go before the Lord and, and also fast and pray and say, Lord, kill this flesh. Because when apostles, and especially real apostles, we move in dimensions that, we, I, I take a look. I take a step back and sometimes be like, "Man, did you just do that?" And then the Holy Spirit got to slap me and say, "No, I just did that." Amen. God does it. Yes. You see, so he especially us apostles. So I'm not oblivious to that. I know this, but I'm trying to teach you guys to know this, especially when you begin to move in high dimensions of the spirit. Imagine that somebody got a broken bone in their neck, and they in a wheelchair, and you go up to them and you say. Get up, walk, take the cast off your neck. That's all you say. They take the cast off their neck. They get up and they walk and they heal instantly. That type of stuff will blow your mind. But if you're not careful as an apostle, as a prophet, you will end up walking in pride, just like Lucifer. Mm. What did the Bible say? The Bible talks about how Lucifer stood before God the Father day and night as the worshiper, as the worship angel. God built jewels and stones and onyx inside of Lucifer's body so the throne would reflect God's glory off of those jewels. And Lucifer would begin to see how beautiful that glory that was reflecting off of the jewels that God built inside his body. And he would begin to say, my God, look at me. But it wasn't him. It was just a reflection of his creator on him. Did you hear what I said? It was just a reflection of his creator on him. See, many of us have, many of us, it's the revelation, many of us have the reflection of God on us. 
but then we go start to take it a little bit farther because my name is Apostle Jones. I don't only got the reflection, but I am God. My that's, a da- that's a dangerous place to be, man of God, woman man. of God. Very dangerous. I throw an apostle right now today. He's starting to insert himself in the Godhead. Wow. He's starting to say, it's, it's the Father, it's the Son, it's Jesus, and then it's me, apostle so-and-so. Wow. He ain't saying it like that outright, but he's basically saying that because he's saying he's saying some uh, 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 erroneous doctrines, saying I'm the only end time apostle in in the world, and I, every two thousand years God raises up a, a supernatural apostle, a general. I'm the only one. Wow, that's he, dangerous. Yes, that's it bad. is. He has, he has developed what's called the Luciferian spirit, but I'm not going to teach on that right now. There's something called the Luciferian spirit. He has developed the Luciferian spirit, and if you're not careful, you can also de- develop that, and it can destroy your entire life. Yes, it can. My God, amen. That's God. Right. God! It's not working well in healing ministry. I'm going to say this and then I'm done. I know a big-time minister right now. I, I'm not, I looked up to him once. I'm not going to say his name. Still look up to him. He just needs to get some things together. But he, you, people go, thousands of people go to his services, and everybody get laid out and slain under the Spirit. But a lot of people end up, when they get up, they still be sick. Why? Why? Because pride has blocked the full manifestation of his ministry. My, my, my. My God. Y'all ain't gonna hear me though. <laughs> I hear. Y'all ain't gonna hear me though. You want to learn how to operate a healing ministry? Well, the beginning foundation of that: read and ask God, meditate and ask God for revelation on Proverbs sixteen eighteen. We just got about oh. thirty five forty minutes of fresh revelation out of that one scripture. Yes, yeah, sir. That one scripture, Proverbs sixteen eighteen. I don't want to see y'all ministry be destructive. I don't want to see it be destructive in your own life, your personal ministries, as well as in the lives of others. I want to yeah. see you guys be uh, uh, transformers, transforming people's lives. Yeah. I want to see you go into a place, go into the mall, and people get healed instantly. I want to see you be moved, used in God's glory like never before. But it starts with us first, removing the foundation of pride. And that's how you heal the sick. That's the beginning getting foundation of it. Glory to God. We're going to have more series, a series coming up where we're going to teach more on the supernatural and how God is going to move and things of that nature. But I want you guys to stay connected to us, stay connected to the glory. I hope that you learned something on glory to God. I love you guys very much. We know this word has supernaturally empowered you for this week. Now is the time to place your angels on an assignment. Yes, your angels. It is time to take authority and now decree what you want to manifest for you and your family on this week. Plant your seed in supernatural fertile ground today. And you activate this word and make it supernaturally manifest by sowing your money seeds. The more you sow, the more miracles will begin to flow into your hands. Your palms will be filled up with overflow by visiting our website at www.kci.world. That's www.kci.world. Not .org, not .com, for we are worldwide where there is always something supernaturally happening. Again, that's www.kci.world. We are speaking life over you and your family, and we are excited about about your your now, your your next, and your your new season in Jesus' Jesus name. name. This has been your weekly word of supernatural empowerment from the The Generals. Generals.